Welcome to the walkthrough video of the FPV Control add-on. To install the add-on, simply drag and drop the file into Blender. Then you'll find it in the end panel like any other add-on. If you see a message about missing dependencies when you open the add-on, go to Preferences, Add-ons, find FPV Control and click Install Dependencies. Now connect the controller to your computer, then turn it on. If it was already turned on before opening Blender, it should connect automatically. If not, just click Refresh Devices, and it will detect it right away. Make sure it appears in the drop-down menu here. Next, we're gonna bind the sticks to the correct controls. Click Detect Stick Movement and move one of the sticks. The add-on will highlight in red the axis number corresponding to the moved stick. Note which ID belongs to each stick and set them up in the drop-down menus. Once that's done, move the throttle all the way down and click Set Min. Then push it all the way up and click Set Max. Repeat this for every stick to make sure the full range of motion is correctly calibrated. In the Stick Response tab, you can adjust the sensitivity, expo, and smoothness of each stick separately, depending on how you want the drone to feel when flying. Now let's go to the Scene Settings tab in Blender. By default, a Blender project only has 250 frames, but you'll probably want to increase that, so when you record a flight, Blender won't loop back to the beginning and overwrite the animation. I already prepared this quick button here, which extends the range automatically, adding 10,000 frames to your timeline. Once that's set, click Create FPV Camera to spawn a camera at the current view in the 3D viewport. Then click Practice Flight to begin flying. The playhead will stay paused, so nothing records yet. This is just free flight mode to practice. When you are done, press Escape or click Stop Simulation. You can also reset the camera to the starting position anytime. Under Drone Settings, you can adjust the camera angle, focal length, and other simulation options. When you're ready to record, move the playhead to where you want to start and click Record Flight. Let's see what we've recorded. Once you're done, you can click Start again to clear the keyframes and reset the camera or click Continue Recording to continue from the last frame if you want to extend the same flight without starting over. After recording, go to the Post Production tab, make sure the FPV camera is selected in the drop-down menu, then click Smooth Camera Animation. As you can see, this smooths out the curves and gives the animation a much cleaner, more natural flight path. You can press it multiple times until the movement feels smooth enough. Now let's set up collisions. First, select an object and click Add Mesh. This adds a rigid body modifier set to passive so the drone will collide with it. You can also put multiple objects in a collection. Select it here and click Add Collection to apply collisions to all of them at once. The Enable Floor checkbox adds an invisible plane that acts as a height limit, so the drone won't go below the value you set here. The Live Rigid Bodies in Simulation feature is still experimental and not fully accurate yet, but here's how it works. When enabled, the drone can interact with active rigid bodies and push them while flying. To add interactive elements, just add a rigid body modifier to a mesh and set it to active. You can also bind a controller button to fire projectiles. To set it up, click here and press a button on your controller. It will highlight in red, and once you've chosen the one you want, just click it to assign it. Again, this is still a work in progress, but still fun to play with. And finally, in Presets and Tools, 
you can save all your settings as a preset. That way, next time you open Blender, you just select your preset and hit load to restore everything. Here are some presets created by beta testers of the add-on. If you are using one of these controllers, you can start by loading the matching presets to map your sticks, then tweak the physics and settings to your style, and save your own preset when you are done. The scene scale setting is a quick way to adjust the size of your entire scene. If the environment feels too big or too small while flying, you can quickly scale it up, down or enter a custom value here until it feels right. And that's about it. If you make something with it, feel free to tag me on your posts, as I would love to see what you guys create. Big thanks to everyone who helped beta test the add-on, and see you in the next video!